Hello and welcome to Evolving Gold's presentation on the Rattlesnake Hills Project in Wyoming. My name is Quentin Henney. I'm the President and Chief Geologist of Evolving Gold. Today we're going to talk about the Rattlesnake Hills property. It is our flagship property, one of 10 we have in the western U.S. We have eight other properties in Nevada and one in New Mexico. Before we zoom into the Rattlesnake Hills Project, we're going to have a look at the Alkaline Province that extends all the way from British Columbia to Mexico along the east side of the Rocky Mountains. Each one of these yellow dots represents a multi-million ounce gold deposit associated with alkaline volcanic rocks. Each one of these alkaline complexes is now extinct, but each one seems to be uh, have an affinity for gold mineralization. These things are quite prolific. Here in New Mexico we have five or six. Here in Colorado we have about as many. And the granddaddy of them all is the Cripple Creek deposit here in central Colorado. Historic production from Cripple Creek amounts to about 20 million ounces at 0.4 ounce per ton. Today Anglo Gold produces gold grades of about 0.76 grams per ton and the cumulative production is approaching 28 million ounces. In Montana there are numerous such systems. This includes Zortman, Landusky, Basin Gulch, and also the Golden Sunlight Deposit, currently being mined by Barry Gold Corporation at about 250,000 ounces per year. Golden Sunlight is approaching 5 million ounces cumulative. Bald Mountain is operated by Gold Corp. It is located in western South Dakota. Its cumulative production is approaching 7 million ounces. It is our nearest producing neighbor. And near Bald Mountain, in the northeast corner of Wyoming, is the Bear Lodge Complex. This is currently being explored by Newmont. Here in this gap in the belt, we have the Rattlesnake Hills Project. We're now going to take a look at the geology of Wyoming. In particular, we're going to look at this area called the Rattlesnake Hills Uplift. This is this block right here. It's essentially an upthrown block that's come up through uh, recent sedimentary rocks seen here in green and pink. This block is overlain by a, a series of Paleozoic sedimentary rocks and in the corner right here is a small belt of Archean schist rocks exposed in the very core of the uplift. We're going to zoom into the property and here you see in pink a series of plugs, lava flows, uh, eruptives of various kinds of alkaline volcanic rocks covering an area of about 100 square miles. This is the Rattlesnake Hills Alkaline Complex. In the center of this complex is the area we're focused. Rattlesnake Hills lies in within an hour's drive of Casper, Wyoming, community of about 30,000 people. Great infrastructure, great paved road all the way, and then a dirt road all the way to the property. This is maintained by the county year-round. Our nearest community is Alcova, Wyoming. This uh, hosts several hotels as well as a fishing resort. We're now going to take a look at the property and talk about some of its features. Start off with a little geography. First of all, we have the South Stock Complex right here. This is a, an intrusive complex that's come up in Archean rocks surrounding it. South Stock is one of our targets. It has gold mineralization, especially on the west end at the surface. North of South Stock is the Antelope Basin area. This is actually a structural graben that's uh, transected by two graben bounding structures in the Archean rocks. We've encountered interesting gold mineralization here in, in last year's drilling. Now jumping over to this area, we see the northeast stock diatreme. This is a circular feature. It's essentially a, an, an erupted throat of a diatreme. It's filled by breccia and also by an intrusive plug seen here in black. North stock diatreme is an oblong shaped diatreme complex. Again, it's an erupted throat and it too is, uh, it hosts a plug of phonolite right in the center. This is an intrusive rock that's come up post eruption. This area was explored by Newmont in the early 1990s. The Antelope Basin area seen 
it back in the background here, was explored by American copper and nickel in the early 1980s. This is a geologic map of the area. Rocks in green here are Archean schists. These include politic schists as well as greenstone. These rocks are, are lying on end, so they're nearly vertical. Here you have the diatrium complex. You can see northeast uh, stock. Here's north stock. We have uh, a pretty broad area trending northeast to southwest of volcanic rocks that occupies it. It's probably situated along this structure right here. In the background, we have south stock. These structures right here define the Antelope Basin area, which connects the North Stock and South Stock areas. We see considerable alteration at surface in this area right here. It leads us to believe this system might be quite a bit larger than we previously anticipated. Here you can see the Graben bounding structures projecting off into the distance. This block is down with respect to the blocks on either side. This is the north uh, stock plug right here. Surrounding it is diatrine breccia. The old roads you see right here were uh, put in place by Newmont. And they drilled about seven or eight shallow RC holes and two core holes in this area. Our targeting suggested the mineralization was considerably deeper. We are now drilling the same area, but to considerably uh, greater depth and increasing the, uh, the volumes of rock we're seeing that are mineralized. Here we are oriented north-south again. This is the South Stock area. This is a geologic uh, 3D model. We're going to take a step through. This is Antelope Basin right in this area. And this is North Stock. North Stock is not, the diatrium is not filled with color so that you can see the, uh, the void or the cavity. This is the throat of the, uh, the extinct volcano. And this is the plug that's come up in the middle of it. Our first hole at North Stock, RSC3, encountered a, a very robust interval, 146 meters of nearly 3 grams per ton. This gold mineralization uh, occurs right along the wall and into the schist country rock adjoining the diatrine. Notice there's mineralization above and there's considerable mineralization in the schist beyond the wall of the diatrine. This was quite a surprise to us. It tells us that there might be more to the system than simply uh, mineralization hosted by the diatrine itself. Holes 4 and 5 were drilled east of hole 3. They both uh, encountered diatrine breaches, went through a plug, and then went into the wall of the diatrine hit some mineralization before going into this plug and then once again as they exited the plug we see lots of mineralization out into the wall. We'll look at that more in a minute. Hole 6 and 7 encountered the same high grade zone that hole 3 encountered. Again it appears that the high grade uh, continues along the wall of the diatrium and into the schist itself. This actually may be wrapping around this plug. This is one uh, theory that we're working on. Hole 9 drilled through the wall of the plug back to the north, and you can see it hit significant inter mineralization in the diatrine breccia on the north side of the plug. Hole 12 was drilled nearly vertically, straight down the guts of this. It colored right above the mineralized zone, and you can see it hit a very broad interval, almost to the, its bottom of, of gold values. Now we're inside the ground, we're actually looking up towards the north, and you can see the bottoms of holes 4 and 5, and a considerable volume of, of mineralization we encountered in the schist out into the wall. Holes 6 and 7 also saw this, and in addition, both holes hit a zone of new high grade, and unrecognized high grade, at their, at their very bottoms, terminated in this. Might be associated with the structure on the Graben, or it might be associated with an unknown structure. Here you can see all the significant mineralization we have out into the wall of the diatrium. Holes 14, 13, and 11 all drilled within the diatrium itself, and they appear to have missed the wall where the high grade appears to be uh, hosted.
we believe this high grade zone was simply missed by these drill holes it continues through this area right here it may actually like I said wrap around the plug itself now we're stepping down to Antelope Basin we're actually 750 meters south of the North Stock drilling this hole at Antelope Basin hit a broad interval 173 meters of 0.62 grams it's hosted by a diorite mass that seems to have come up along the, the West Robin structure. This one drill hole uh, is quite impressive considering the deepest drill, drilling to this point is only about 300 feet, or, feet in depth or so. Hole 2 was targeted at South Stock, which is just on the other side of this fault. Unfortunately, it went through the plane of the fault before encountering South Stock target, and therefore it uh, tested the foot wall of the fault. We believe that this is still a viable target. We have considerable gold at surface right in this area. Here are the two Robin bounding structures. These trend north and south. They transect the South Stock target. This area is highly altered and has gold mineralization up to three grams. We plan on testing this again this coming summer in the, the belief that this uh, is a continuation of the minerals, mineralized zone along the Graben. Here at Antelope Basin, we're going to offset this one lone hole that we drilled at Antelope Basin in hopes of expanding this gold zone considerably. The mineralization seen here, the drill trace just visible, is very similar in style to that seen at North Stock. We believe, therefore, that the fluids may have originated from this North Stock area and traveled down these grob and bounding structures. If so, this would open up our target considerably. This year, we're going to test for the high grade zone, the continuity of this zone coming through here. As you can see, hole 10 failed to encounter that zone. It stopped short in a cavity. We're also going to test around the margin of the diatreme here on the north side, as well as go back to the area previously drilled last year and try to infill and perhaps uh, develop enough drilling to uh, come up with a resource. Now we're going to go back inside the ground here. Again, we're looking towards the north or northwest. One of the more, most exciting features of this deposit is all this mineralization we see in the schist itself. We're going to hit this pretty hard this year. This could increase our volume of mineralization considerably, especially this high grade zone that we see at the bottom of the holes in six and seven. This is quite intriguing. Might actually be the continuation of the high grade that we see, see in holes three and seven up top. These might actually be displaced. This mineralization might be just displaced from this high grade at depth. Here we are looking down on the system. Again, we're going to test this high grade zone as it comes around the plug. As well as this area in between Antelope Basin and North Stock. We believe based on alteration that this area right here and the fact we're seeing mineralization in the wall of the dietary may host a, a considerable tonnage of mineralized rock. We see alteration in mineralization along many of these creek beds through here indicating fluids have affected those rocks. Rattlesnake Hills is one of 10 properties that Walden Gold has in the western U.S. We have eight others in Nevada, one in New Mexico. We consider rat Rattlesnake uh, an exciting target, perhaps one of the most exciting discoveries in the western U.S. in recent history. At present we have about 17 million in cash on hand. We're going to explore Rattlesnake quite aggressively. This year we have an exploration budget of about five and a half million dollars of which most is going to be directed towards Rattlesnake Hills where we're, we're anticipating drilling 12 to 15,000 meters using three drill rigs. Our permit is set to be issued around May 5th at which time we uh, hope the weather cooperates and we can get to drilling. Thank you very much for listening.